this is a NPTEL online certification course on theory of elasticity. So, before uh, uh, starting the course formally, we will have uh, today the introductory lecture of this course. So, um, before going into the lecture, I just wanted to mention that I am Professor uh, Vishwanath Banerjee, I am a faculty member of Department of Civil Engineering, IIT Kharagpur and um, one of my colleague Professor Amit Shaw, who will also be taking part of the course uh, with me. And uh, I welcome all of your uh, questions and suggestions, uh, but uh, uh, you can contact me over email or in the NPTEL blog, uh, wherever you are comfortable. Uh, but before uh, sending me email, uh, where the email IDs are given here, uh, before sending me the email, I request all of you uh, to uh, give a subject uh, of the email as NOC hyphen T E, T E stands for theory of elasticity. So, please uh, mention this uh, 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 subject uh, uh, NOC T E, uh, so that I will understand or uh, I and Professor Shaw will understand that this is uh, related to this course. So, um, uh, uh, in this, uh, this is uh, the first lecture of module 1 where uh, we will uh, discuss what is actually the uh, course content and uh, some primary objective of the course. So, uh, first uh, um, uh, let me uh, um, uh, go through the content once again, uh, because uh, theory of elasticity uh, is uh, undergraduate as well as uh, postgraduate level course. So, um, uh, in this course what we plan to cover is mathematical preliminaries initially, uh, we, where you will uh, learn one of the important thing uh, of higher uh, for understanding advanced mechanics is tensor. So, uh, we will uh, learn tensor, what is tensor here, uh, we will learn here and then uh, concept of stress, strain, then we will emphasize on material behavior. Material behavior will actually take uh, two weeks uh, uh, lecture, uh, so where we will discuss ge general and isotropic material, uh, linear elastic material and then uh, different constitutive relations and its implication in solving the uh, mechanics related uh, problem. Then um, we will go for the boundary value problem, which is the uh, main uh, in contrast to the strength of material, where we do not really bother about the boundary value problem. Here we will uh, go for the boundary value problem, not only boundary value problem in the Cartesian coordinate system, we will also uh, try to give you a glimpses of general curvilinear coordinate system, for instance, the polar coordinate system and the um, uh, spherical uh, cylindrical uh, coordinate system. Then uh, we will uh, talk about the uh, different uh, problems related to uh, plane strain, plane stress, which uh, probably you have heard those who have done solid mechanics, uh, they have done uh, this plane strains, the word plane stress, what, uh, what does this mean and uh, plane strain problems. Then uh, I think um, all of you must have done the problems in flexure that is bending. So, the bending problems uh, we have already solved in uh, strength of material concept, uh, strength of uh, from the understanding of strength of material. Then um, we will see what is the difference between these flexure uh, problems if we approach via the theory of elasticity approach. Uh, uh, so, this is a one uh, distinctive feature, then we will talk about the torsion, torsion also uh, probably you have gone through torsion of a circular section, where uh, uh, this is uh, probably in mechanics or solid mechanics or strength of materials. So, here uh, we will uh, go for the uh, torsion of a rectangular section, where warping is a important uh, uh, part. So, this, uh, this is a distinctive feature of this course, uh, where uh, we will learn in depth what is the problems. Mm. Now, uh, then we will go for the some uh, new thing like uh, complex variable method, which uh, 
uh, those who have not taken this course earlier, uh, they will find it new and this is an interesting topic where uh, we can solve uh, the solids uh, problems in solids through the complex variable methods. Then uh, uh, another important aspect probably you have heard, uh, this is a theory of uh, thermoelasticity. So, we will be uh, mostly restrictive on the uh, linear uh, thermoelasticity or which is uh, popularly known as uncoupled thermoelasticity, where uh, uh, the, um, we do not solve the heat equation, we only uh, take the temperature changes and uh, we really do not bother about the propagation of the heat. So, this is an important aspect uh, in the elasticity. Um, and then we will go for the photoelasticity. Photoelasticity is very interesting and very important uh, topic in today's world because uh, earlier days what we used to uh, do is that uh, we take any measurement through the strain gauges which is point wise we fix. Uh, suppose there is a uh, sample. Uh, uh, sample uh, you want to test and then uh, um, now this uh, sample what you do basically you take the uh, you load it and then uh, uh, you put some strain gauges here some strain gauges here to measure the strain uh, at these uh, points. So, but uh, as the technology developed and the development in the sensors and so development of the technology. Uh, now, what we do is basically is uh, take the full uh, image of the uh, this uh, specimen. For instance, if I give you the example, uh, uh, if I take an image of the undeformed uh, sample uh, and uh, then uh, once it is deformed, if I take another image and correlate these two image, then we can actually calculate the displacement at any point of the uh, uh, sample. So, for instance, this is the uh, displacement. Uh, so, um, this is the displacement in this direction. So, at any point or every point of the sample, we can calculate the displacement. So, this is uh, popularly known as the digital image correlation. Basically, what we do? Uh, we compare two image and find out the relative uh, changes in the displacement uh, and then from there actually uh, we can compute the strengths. Uh, so, uh, uh, instead of a sensor uh, um, uh, or the uh, strain gauge approach, this gives us full field uh, displacement. Another uh, thing uh, is we will be mostly talking about the linear elasticity, but it is essential to know uh, uh, the concepts of li non-linear elasticity, uh, elasticity. Those who uh, want to pursue higher studies and um, very involved uh, simulation jobs, uh, so they need to know nonlinear elasticity as well. So, this is a overall uh, plan for this course. Uh, now, uh, uh, before uh, we get into the first topic which will be which we will discuss from the next uh, lecture, uh, let us uh, um, study some of the basic things. So, um, to start with what is elasticity? So, let us uh, uh, clear our concept about the elasticity. Uh, I found uh, some of us having concepts like, like elasticity is where the stress is proportional to strain and all those things. Uh, for instance, uh, when uh, stress, uh, when I uh, reload, uh, when I load a material, when I load a sample and unload it, it comes to original position, then it is called elasticity. So, these definitions we will relook it here. So, first of all, le, uh, let us uh, put it in this way that the tendency of a material to return to its original shape and size when forces causing deformation are removed. So, there are uh, important thing. Uh, for instance, the original shape and size, what do we mean by that? For instance, here uh, this is a uh, stress strain curve of a material where I when I give uh, a stress it uh, deforms and when I uh, uh, unload it after certain point then it uh, comes back to original position. But this curve is a straight line, 
right. So, we know uh, the equation of a straight line which is uh, y equals to m x plus c right. So, m is the slope. So, uh, we also know that this slope is essentially the Young's modulus. So, this we know from your our basic uh, knowledge uh, of strength of material, but in a case where this this curve is essentially not linear, it can be any uh, function for instance a quadratic function, cubic function or any other kind of uh, function. So, this need not be a straight line, this could be a parabola, this could be a anything for instance. Uh, so, um, this again then should we call it linear uh, elasticity? Uh, or should we call it plasticity. So, let us uh, investigate this kind of thing. So, um, for instance this curve, this curve is actually when I load from here and it reaches to uh, this point and then when I unload it, it follows the same path, same path here and reaches here. So, can I say it is elasticity? Yes, it is elasticity, it is nonlinear elasticity. So, first we learn what is linear elasticity and then what is nonlinear elasticity. So, elasticity can be linear as well as nonlinear. So, this is an important distinction. Most of us uh, will uh, confuse with that when the stress is proportional to strain, then it is called the elasticity. See, in this case, the second case, stress is not proportional to strain. If you look uh, for this part of the uh, stress strain curve, uh, the amount of strain increase uh, and strain, uh, strain uh, amount of uh, strain is increased very high, but corresponding stress increment is not very high, uh, but after certain time it is again increasing. So, uh, this uh, kind of thing is known as nonlinear non elasticity. So, um, a material is perfectly elastic if it is loading and unloading paths are same. This is very important. We must uh, understand this. What does this mean? Okay? We will see an example. So, a material is perfectly elastic if its loading and unloading path are same. So, unloading path cannot be different right? and why so? We will uh, see it through an example. So, there is no dissipation of energy. Right? So, this is the reason. For instance, uh, if you have uh, studied from your strength of material concept, the uh, when a stress strain, uh, stress strain uh, curve if I draw, what is the uh, stress strain, uh, the curve representing or the area under the stress strain curve. If you have uh, seen, this is known as the strain energy. Right? So, this part um, this part is known as the strain energy. Now, uh, you see the, uh, the consequence of this is there is no dissipation of energy or the uh, loading and unloading path are same. Consequence to this, if the loading and unloading path are different, the energy will be different, right? Because uh, for instance, if um, uh, uh, if the loading path uh, for this is different, the uh, area under the unloading curve and area under the loading curve will be different. So, strain energy will be different for the two uh, loading case and unloading case which is not possible for the elasticity because that means there are some changes in the energy either it is uh, gone from the system or some energy has been added to the system which cannot happen in case of a elasticity. So, uh, as we have stated that it is a linear elastic or nonlinear elastic, sometimes we also uh, talk about hyper elasticity, uh, hyper elasticity uh, where the strain energy density there is a um, uh, uh, form of strain energy density and then um, uh, we uh, um, uh, uh, in uh, case of a elasticity, we also distinguish it that it is not um, um, uh, uh, time independent. So, for instance, a perfect elasticity, the state of stress at any time is independent of the previous history of stress. Hence, stress is a unique function of strain. So, this is very important because there is no, uh, the material uh, can be defined in two ways it is time dependent material or time independent material. So, uh, that means, if 
how I load the specimen and how it shows the deformation if it, if it is dependent on the previous history how I load then it is um, time dependent material. So, uh, the uh, in case of a perfect elasticity this is not possible. So, it is independent. So, now if that may uh, if that condition is preserved then stress has to be the uh, unique function of strain. That means, the derivative of the strain energy function with respect to stress or with respect to uh, strain it should be given the stress. So, in case of a nonlinear elastic material, the stress is a nonlinear function of strain. So, naturally, because uh, this uh, stress and strain relation for a linear material, what we know from our basic knowledge of strength of material is the Hooke's law stress is proportional to strain. So, the proportionality constant which is the slope of the stress strain curve is a Young's modulus, right. But if this relation, this relation is a equation or this equation is a uh, equation of a straight line. For instance, if I write this sigma is essentially E epsilon. Now, this is an equation, a equation of a straight line uh, where sigma and y are the um, variable and E is the slope of the sigma epsilon curve. Now, um, uh, if uh, in case of a nonlinear elasticity, this curve is not a straight line. So, naturally the stress has to be the function of strain. So, that means, suppose if I take uh, say uh, epsilon square or some other term uh, some E 1, E 2 something some epsilon or something. So, this is a nonlinear function naturally the curve will not be uh, straight line. So, this is an important distinction between linear and nonlinear elasticity. So, now um, in both linear and nonlinear elasticity stress is obtained from a energy potential which is known as the strain energy and which is a function of strain. So, basically what it says is that the uh, uh, if I take the partial derivative of the uh, strain energy function with respect to the strain it will give me the stress. So, this is true for the both the case in case of a nonlinear, in case of a linear elastic also. I think from a linear elastic case you have seen it earlier. Now, uh, another uh, instance uh, uh, for instance uh, let us see an, uh, see an example. This is the uh, a material which uh, starts if I load it, it follows this path, it follows this path and when I it follows this path and it reaches here. Now, from here uh, I uh, remove the load and then it comes back through this path not from the original path. What will happen? So, as I have said earlier if you uh, look carefully uh, what will happen uh, that when I was when I uh, up to at the loading point if I uh, draw the area under this curve this was my the uh, this portion was my the strain energy right. Now, uh, when I unload it when I unload it when I unload it my uh, unloading curve is different. So, this part is my now the strain energy. So, this portion some portion of the energy is actually lost in the process. So, this portion of the energy is actually lost. So, this portion uh, is out of the system due to this loading and unloading process. So, this cannot be elastic because um, there is a loss of energy. So, this is known as even though in uh, um, uh, means uh, contrary to the um, um, uh, definition that it reaches to the point where it started right. So, uh, there is no permanent deformation, there is no residual strain, there is nothing. So, uh, it reaches uh, to the uh, point from where it is uh, started loading uh, or we started loading. Even though this is true, but this material is not elastic. Why? Because it loses some energy and this proceed, uh, this uh, type of material is known as the viscoelastic material. So, it uh, 
uh, though uh, uh, in a viscoelastic material there are no residual strain, there is a dissipation of energy different loading and unloading path. Because this happen because stress is not only depends on the strain, but also rate of strain. Right. So, uh, this uh, we will not cover in this course, but it is better to know uh, from this course that uh, stress cannot be only function of strain, it can be function of strain rate also. So, in case of a victim, uh, this is time derivative that is uh, del epsilon del t. Right. So, how I load the material, this uh, my stress will also uh, depends on that. So, because stress is not a unique function uh, of strain uh, uh, and a strain energy function cannot be derived in general. So, this is uh, this is for a case of a viscoelastic material. So, the um, in a nutshell it is very important how I load and how I unload the loading and unloading path remains same, it cannot be changed. This is the basic thing for elastic material. Now, uh, uh, in case of inelastic material, for instance, uh, if you uh, see any uh, material or any uh, thing which uh, after loading, it does not come to original position, it comes to a, a different position, then we say that there is a permanent strain in used in the material or the sample. This kind of material is called inelastic material. So, an inelastic material there are permanent or residual strain when the body is completely unloaded. So, this is a dissipation of energy and most of which is converted to heat. So, this is uh, 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 um, this this is also uh, a not uh, part of this uh, course because when we'll uh, talk about the inelastic material, then we'll discuss about it. But um, it is better to know this distinction from the uh, elasticity. So this kind of ma uh, material sometimes we call it plastic material. So in elasticity, one has to work with the increment of strain instead of total accumulatory strain, as stress is not a unique function of strain. So the total strain at any time can be obtained by integrating the strain increments. So stra uh, this is a general elastic uh, plasticity uh, uh, formulation, but in this course, we will not uh, discuss about these things, but what we will discuss here and why we will discuss here. So, all of you probably have gone through strength of material. So, why to learn another course theory of elasticity. Uh, so, this theory of elasticity for instance, uh, in strength of material, we make assumptions to simplify problems and to arrive close form solutions. If you remember the flexure formula that m by i, e by r, sigma by y, what was our assumption? If you remember carefully that plane section remains plane uh, and all those uh, before bending and after bending and we assume that it is a pure bending case. So, this kind of assumptions is actually valid for the slender member. But if it is not a slender member, we can uh, we can we cannot apply this kind of uh, equations. So, but we have not distinguished whether the member is a slender member or whether is a member is a uh, shorter member or strut or uh, short beam, whatever you call. So we apply m by i, e by r, and sigma by y. But it is not true because in reality every member is a three dimensional member. So, it has an effect of cross section. So, it is not necessarily true that only uh, the longitudinal, uh, sec longitudinal section or the longitudinal direction stress or strain will be uh, important. So, cross sectional uh, stress strain will all uh, will also be important. So, this is a clear distinction that our knowledge of strength of material is not adequate to solve this kind of problem. For instance, another problem probably I have discussed a uh, little earlier, uh, earlier is a kind of torsion problem. So, in a torsion problem uh, what we have uh, seen that uh, we always go for the circular section y circular section or the hollow section with the uh, constant thickness, uh, because we will not observe 
any uh, any warping in it. So, what what is warping? So, for instance, if I uh, in a rectangular section, uh, if I uh, uh, give a torque, uh, if I give a torque, then uh, there is a um, uh, there is a uh, uh, change in the section uh, in the longitudinal case if you see this carefully there is this change or different stress uh, strain level appears so this kind of uh, this kind of uh, phenomena is known as a warping we will discuss it in detail so uh, the uh, actually the assumption uh, is correct only for there is no warping this assumption is correct only for the uh, circular member so to solve such problem theory of elasticity has to be used where the basic approach will be forming a governing differential equation and then applying boundary condition to solve the problem finally. Uh, so, without uh, making any simplification or any simplified assumptions. So, this is uh, important uh, thing and that I feel will motivate you to learn theory of elasticity because uh, the assumptions are true for certain class of problem. So, it is not in general true for all classes of problem. For instance, you may always encounter to have this problem that uh, a rectangular member or a, um, uh, a non rectangular or non circular member experiencing torque or uh, torsion. So, this kind of problem we cannot solve through the knowledge of strength of material. So, this is important. Now, um, Another aspect which we uh, must understand is that material. In today's world, uh, if you see the left hand side, uh, the right hand side picture is actually the Boeing Dreamliner, uh, which is a huge portion of this uh, plane is made of composites. Because uh, why uh, composites? So, it is a new kind of material uh, um, where uh, the main objective is uh, that if we make it lightweight or the weight of the structure is less, but strength is more. So, this kind of material if we can use it in our structure, uh, the uh, cost of fuel is will be naturally less for this kind of um, uh, problem. So, uh, this kind of structure. So, that is why we try to use uh, composite kind of material and uh, another uh, important it is not only the passenger uh, flight it is also the uh, 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 Tejas for instance Tejas is also uh, used a huge amount of composites uh, to uh, um, build. So, now um, uh, uh, there is an in interesting distinction most of us have learned that material is isotropic right what do you mean by isotropic the isotropic means that the uh, any direction material property is same for instance if i uh, take a uh, steel or uh, any other uh, isotropic material so if there is a uh, direction x di uh, y direction and x direction the material is um, remain same. So, if I now say that E x equals to E y equals to E and Poisson's ratio Poisson's ratio nu uh, x y equals to nu y a uh, y x equals to nu. So, and uh, shear modulus g x y is actually g and we say it is E by 2 into 1 plus nu right. So, uh, ultimately the iso in case of isotropic material you are familiar with this relation. So, uh, ultimately there is two actually if we know the two independent constant E and nu we can characterize that material, but this kind of composite material it is not possible for uh, characterizing uh, with the two only independent constant. For instance, this is a matrix and there is a fiber. You have seen this kind of uh, structure or this kind of material in day to day daily life. Uh, so, um, 
it can be glass fiber, it can be carbon fiber, it can be Kevlar or anything. So, uh, but this kind of material cannot be characterized as isotropic material. For instance, it could be an orthotropic material or in general it could be an isotropic material. So, in case of an anisotropic uh, material, these relations are not again valid. So, if I write it for an anisotropic material, so E x should not be equals to E y, right. So, that means Young's modulus in x direction and y direction will be not same and Poisson's ratio nu x y should not be equals to nu y x, right. And g x y cannot be represented in terms of E x and E y. So, finally, if there is uh, uh, for a two dimensional if I take 2 D orthotropic material from here we will have two material constant or two Young's modulus from here there will be 2 and there will be 1. So, total 5, but this uh, new x y and new y x are not just independent. So, uh, from here there is a restriction if I fix nu x, x y then nu y x has to have some value. Um, so, from here after this restriction which we will discuss in detail in this course. So, there will be one constant. So, in case of a 2 D orthotropic material this becomes 4 uh, independent constants or four material constants. So, four uh, independent constants is required to characterize this kind of material. So, this is one aspect of the course. Another uh, aspect probably uh, all of you uh, have uh, seen it uh, like the material heterogeneity. For instance, uh, the material hetero we always take isotropic material. So, uh, we may encounter for instance, if I talk uh, all of us know what is concrete. So, concrete is a heterogeneous material, but we take always uh, sometimes isotropic. So, this is required when you need to go for the advanced studies where isotropy material isotropy is not necessarily true. In especially if you consider the micro mechanics or uh, the advanced um, composite material where the microstructure of the problem is very important, then actually you uh, need to know what is the heterogeneous uh, material property or, hetero or the material profile. So, for instance, those who do not know which is heterogeneous uh, property that means, a material can be isotropic as well as heterogeneous, but uh, um, uh, uh, the heterogeneity means that uh, at different location material property will be different, but not, ne not necessary that at different direction it will be uh, different, right. So, this is one aspect of the course. So, uh, that is all for today's lecture. So, uh, we will uh, from the next class we will start the tensor. So, uh, from the lecture 2 uh, we will go for the tensor analysis. Thank you.